So if you bought a Harbor Freight trailer in looks like the last 10 years or so, you probably got a letter in the mail. This was uh, called, uh, let's see, Utility Trailer Kit, Trailer Kit Light Non-Compliance, NHTSA Recall Number 16V597. So it pretty much says here, um, item number 69624 may have lenses that are not compliant. And um, the following trailer kits are used with item 6924, which is item 62170, the Hallmaster 1195 pound capacity 48 by 96 heavy duty folding trailer. So it goes on to say in this recall, uh, and our records reflect that you have one of the above utility trailer kits. And uh, as part of the notice, uh, Harbor Freight Tools has included a postcard if you to complete and return. And if you're still using above one of the trailers on the highways, then you will get a repair kit with a set of replacement taillights. Now, actually, I didn't read that originally because I thought maybe, well, if it's just the lenses that are not compliant, they're just going to send me new lenses. But uh guess not. They were pretty serious about sending a whole new uh, lens kit. So I actually got a shipment in the mail, and this is... Nice little order form, ordered from harborfreights.com, which I didn't order that, but uh, total charge of $41. So, not exactly a cheap um, a cheap recall form. And uh, this is the instructions that came with it, which is pretty much generic. It says, remove the lights, install the new lights uh, for both the rear and the side indicators. But anyway, so what they sent was this thing. Oops, sorry. Uh, item number 62488, the LED trailer light kit, which is includes both the indicators, the two tails, and uh, a full wiring harness. So um, a lot of stuff I won't be using, but they sent it out in the mail anyways. So I thought, well, I put the trailer away for the year already, but I thought, well, I'll just take it apart and take a look at it and see what they ship me see what kind of quality it is if it's really useful to put on there so i had some of this apart already and looking at it now let's grab some of it out okay i'm gonna put this over back so these are the two tail lights this is i think the driver's side because it has the the extra lights for the license plate those are actually LED too, which is nice. The two indicators, which I can't tell what these are, but these are definitely different than the ones that came with the trailer because they actually have a separate ground wire rather than that crazy metal tab thing that doesn't really work. So off the bat, we're looking good. And it includes um, these vampire connectors and then the wire nuts, which are atrocious to try and do electrical connections with, so I'm not going to do that. Full wire harness with... Uh, standard four pin connector and then a plastic license plate bracket which I don't know if I'm gonna bother using or not now that they look at it at least it is angled a little bit um, to accommodate for uh, tipping the trailer but yeah, it's just plastic not sure how well that would hold up and of course full directions I won't bother looking at those right now let me get this out of the way So when I got the trailer, I was originally thinking of uh, modifying the lights anyways, because they're just not exactly the brightest things in the world. Um, one of the things I was thinking about doing was taking some of this uh, aluminum foil tape that they use for uh, heating ducts and uh, exhaust pipes and stuff like that, and um, using this and make it as reflectors on the inside. Uh, fairly sticky, will probably hold up pretty well, but I never quite got around to it. So this is actually a nice improvement then for me, because I don't actually have to buy LEDs. But, alright, so this is a passenger side. One thing I noticed immediately is they actually have three wires on these. So there's the tail light stop and turn, but then they actually have a separate ground wire. 
which is a nice improvement because you don't have to rely on the ground through the stud. So that means then I'll have to modify my wiring harness a little bit, which I planned it to do anyways. Um, other thing I noticed about it is still using this kind of crappy foam gaskets. Not exactly super waterproof. Uh, they're not intended to be submerged, but still I'd like to actually see rubber, but I guess you know for the price. Uh, they do put a prominent weep hole in this one though. But let's look at the other one. This is probably the one I'm actually going to tear apart for you. So uh, this one doesn't have a weep hole, but I guess they're just relying on the fact that there's lots of gaps around this clear plastic lens to drain them out. And then you can see some of the uh, construction on the inside. So they actually have the LEDs mounted onto a PCB. And then they're mounted onto a separate plastic holder. And it looks like the whole PCB might actually be glued down. And then I can see definitely some conformal coating to try and uh, weatherproof them. Well, let's take the top lens off. Unfortunately, I put the trailer away about just a week before I got this notice. So I'm not going to bother pulling it out this year. But when I get it back out next year, I'll probably do another video showing uh, the installation on this and hopefully a side-by-side -side comparison maybe of the old light and the new light. Let's see what we got. So it's just a plastic lens and oops, the foam. I'll take a look at that later. So okay, so we got the same construction you can see from underneath. So it's just a a single PCB, looks like just a single side actually. I don't know how well you can see that, but you can actually, because it's a black PCB, but you can faintly see the traces that were etched out. Uh, looks like they actually did kind of a nice job because they did a, a reverse etch. So they, they only etched out the parts that they needed to separate. That leaves the most copper on the board. Um, LEDs don't get super hot, not as hot as incandescents, but they're much more sensitive to heat. So you have to make sure you get the heat away from the LEDs as much as possible. So putting all, doing this reverse uh, solder, uh, doing the reverse um, where they're only taking out the gaps between the areas rather than uh, removing everything except for the wires that leaves the maximum amount of the copper on the board and that gives you the maximum amount of the heat dissipation so that might actually improve life a little bit but i can see of course over the top of the entire thing is just completely conformal coated looks like they did an okay job i don't see anything that's actually exposed in terms of the conformal coat looks like there's a couple pads here which might be test points that might be exposed um, standard construction looks like they got the three wires coming in from the back to the middle of the board here and then these ones must be going off to the side indicators and the, the tail or the, uh, the license plate light so that doesn't look too bad at all I like that uh, the lens looks like they use um, Fresnel lenses in order to try and spread the light out from the LEDs since the LEDs are up point source of light um, and in a tail light you want something that's going to spread the light out evenly and as much as possible so these is for now lens to um, spread the light back out which you don't see any alignment keys on it but it does appear to be mostly aligned with the LEDs I don't see any that are seriously off there's a couple like I think these two look like they're kind of not in the center. These ones are definitely are. They tend to look like they get a little bit off when they get over here. That probably won't affect it too much, but we'll plug it in and we'll try it here on the bench. Let me put this one back together quick. Definitely change the pace from my other videos where I actually get to go to the electronic workbench and rather than crawling around on the garage floor. 
What queen? Okay. So this one I'm not going to take out because it looks like the lens is actually just plastic snaps folded in, so it's going to be hard to get to. Uh, I don't see any fasteners, though. Holding um, the separate assembly down. Doesn't look like there are. Oh, I can see the actual side indicator out light. I'll show you here. Now this is the one surprising thing. I've seen this before and I saw some people online complain about this. Everything on this thing is LED except for the side indicator. They just use a standard incandescent. Um, this is a fort uh, fortunately a standard bulb. I got a bunch of these because my other cars use them and burn through them. So, uh, what size is this? 34769. I'm not sure what wattage these are. But um, they're very common, so they're not a big deal. And I guess, I guess they weren't required to get LEDs for it. It seems like kind of like a cop-out or like they cheated. Or, really, it is probably built this down to a price so they get the LEDs and the important parts and the side indicators. I'm not entirely sure of the DOT if they're required or not. Actually this would be the NHST I think would be national. <coughs> no, these are DOT so I'm not sure what the certification is and if the trailer is required to have the side indicators because most cars don't have a side rear a rear side indicator for the taillights so interesting all right so that's the taillights let's look at the side indicators these actually i can't remember and i don't have a i haven't compared these to the ones but these actually look larger i think than the ones that came with the trailer maybe i'm just making that up but they feel wider in terms of size let's take a look at these quick Okay, yeah, bits of plastic or foam falling out. Yeah, same kind of construction. So they got two wires coming into a, a PCB where the LEDs are mounted onto, um, and then conformal code. And it looks like these actually have the actual um, extra layer of amber phosphor over the top of them. So these might, you know, well, these these LEDs will probably actually be um, amber with the amber lens. Uh, whereas the taillights looked like they were probably just clear. They could be red. I probably should have left that lens off to check that. But maybe I'll double. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, the other thing I noticed is these are same kind of construction where they got the, the LEDs mounted the PCB and the PCB mounted into uh, a plastic box like this and glued down. But um, they glued down the box, but then it's not exactly tight. So. It'd be worthwhile to uh, open these up and tighten that down so it doesn't vibrate on you. They might actually have to be aligned or something like that in order to get the best effect. Yeah, yeah that's not too bad. Let's let's try powering these things up. Let's see what they look like. Now, one thing I did go out. I, I, I didn't confirm which uh, exact light, tail light that they're using. But it's probably one that's pretty generic to like this, which is a standard, fairly standard uh, tail light bulb. And these are about uh, 12 volt, 12.8, 14 volt, 28.5 watts, and then 8.3 watts for the different filaments for running lights or uh, stop and tail stop and turn rather so those are the two different wattages that this bulb here would use so I wanted to compare what energy what power these things take so let's do I 
it's in 12.8 watt volts. Let's bump that up. Batteries park them. Now, like, uh, lead acid batteries are usually around 12 volts, but they usually require about 13.8 volts to uh, to charge. Hmm. That's a good question. What is so? I think on these kits, white is the negative, which is very confusing. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Gives a really strong line. I got a feeling those are much brighter than the, the standard ones. That's pretty nice. It is a really, really good indication. That's that's not bad at all. And it looks like that the power supply is drawing uh, 30 milliamps. That's not bad at all. It's crossed four LEDs, so that's a decent current. That'll work. That's not including the actual... Um, what the actual current going through the LEDs. Now, I didn't check to see if those were wired in parallel or series. I imagine they're series, but didn't check that. Well, conformal coded. I don't want to go digging through the uh, the conformal code in order to check that. I don't really know. The, um, between the, uh, the waterproofing. All right, so. Look this guy up. So brown is the tail light, so that should be the, the standard running lights. Oh yeah. Cool. Those look good. So if you can actually, you can almost directly compare the light intensity of these indicators, which are the incandescents that come with the the trailer, compared to uh, these LED ones. And pretty positive, these are significantly brighter. So that's a good start. Uh, these tail lights are not bad uh, in terms of what they cast to the paper. I don't know if you can see that, maybe I'll turn the overhead light off. So they. Cast it out fairly good. The Fresnel lenses actually do a pretty good job throwing the, the light out pretty evenly. I can still see a couple rings of light and stuff, but once you get out, you don't really see it too much. And for the actual license plate light, that actually would work fine. I consider that significantly brighter than definitely what was in the kit because um, the, the kit lights just rely on the residual light off of one of these bulbs to light both the uh, the light facing backwards and the license plate facing down. So that's probably um, that's probably the DOT's major concern about it is that the uh, there's just not enough light coming out of the damn things to do both. That's a pretty good pattern. I like that. Excellent. Very good. All right. So that's just a tail light. Let's, let's uh, sorry, turn that back on. Now let's try out the turn and stop light, which should be significantly brighter. Off! Oh, holy crap! Ow! That hurts. So the thing to note then is um, all the LEDs light up for both modes, and it's just the intensity. Oh, that's actually making, can't really, ow. <laughs> I'm getting blinded by this thing. That works pretty well. I'm casting the light up onto the ceiling to get an idea of what the uh, the pattern is far out. And it actually looks a lot like, maybe you can see this. The ceiling here. So it actually looks very very even excellent very even I'm kind of curious oh I actually didn't even look at the current 
So in this mode, it's using about 200 milliamps according to the power supply. Let's shift. Let me do a quick calculation. Sorry. See. So, uh, total point. Oh, shoot. Hold on. This doesn't make for good uh, internet viewing. I'm watching me try to fumble around in the dark. Let me turn the lights back on. 12.8 volts times uh, about 0.2 amps. It's only about three watts. Which is surprising. Oh wait. Hmm. Huh. Power times no power is voltage times the current squared. <laughs> Derp. All right. Electrical engineering messed up. I can't see it all. So let's try doing both at once. Okay. Yeah, that's bright. It's driving both then. Oops, I'm actually hitting my current limit. Driving almost half an amp. Which is still isn't bad at all considering uh, the incandescents be pulling a hell of a lot more. They'll probably be pulling two amps. So, it's still very bright. Um, the only probably difference really you get from like your standard incandescence is because they actually have two filaments. Um, when you have both the running, the running lights, and you hit the brake lights. Both filaments turn on, so you get the combined output. Um, whereas if you have no running lights on, you hit the brakes, it's only going to light up the, the braking filament. If you have just the running lights, it's only going to light up the running filament. So these LEDs work a little bit differently. So, uh, oops, uh, that means these LEDs are being driven at full power with the... Uh, Oh god, I gotta turn it off. Sorry. These LEDs are being driven at full power with the brake, so there's no more power to give it when you have both the running lights and the brake. So eh, at the end, um, I think you're still gonna be far brighter than before, but it's yeah. That's the really only difference. So you would have a there'd be no difference between full brake and full brake and running. That's the only minor difference, but I mean, they're still very bright. That's not bad. I actually can't wait to try and put those on. Very, very cool. And uh, strangely, these kits are actually individually serial numbered. Probably because they have run into the same kind of crap um, with these LED kits, is that they, at some point, are not compliant with a uh, wonderful government here, the National NHS. NHTSA, National Highway and Transportation uh, Safety Authority. So very, very cool. Um, thanks for watching.